Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Um, today we're going to focus on this particular function group called acyl chloride. Um, so let's get into it. So acyl chloride is one of the most reactive function groups that you could learn in high school. Um, so it has a functional group of COCl and this can be bonding to whatever. Okay, so this is the, um, the function group COCl. Um, so the suffix is something um, call something something oil oil chloride okay so if for example if you have something like ch3 ch2 cocl um so it's it's the same as naming it as a you know if this was a cooh you will name it propanoic acid right so by default same same thinking this carbon number one this is carbon number one by default, this is carbon number two, this is carbon number three. So this will be called propanoyl chloride, OYL chloride. Okay, so it's a propane, so it's just like three carbons in the longest chain, and the OYL um, chloride is a suffix, so propanoid chloride, very simple. Um, and you don't need to call it propan one oil chloride because just like I said, this carbon is by default carbon number one. Okay, so you just, it's always is, all right? So if you have something like say, for example, they like asking this in the exam, um, for example, this, you know, how do we name that? So same thing, this is carbon number one, number two, number three, number four. So this is four hydroxy, four hydroxy, uh, butanoyl chloride. Okay, so the naming is very straightforward, um, especially you know if you're a 13 student um, or have done some organic, and this shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so I'm more interested in the in the chemical properties of acyl chloride or acid chloride. Okay, so you probably can um, tell by the name. It's you know it's also known as acid chloride. It doesn't mean like the fact that it's called acid chloride means that it's, it's not an acidic solution, but it can undergo reactions really easily and produces a hydrochloric acid, okay? So how does this work is that um, acyl chloride undergoes what we call nucleophilic substitution. So it does similar to what you learn, you know, with simple organic like substitution, you substitute a particular group, okay? But with COCl, this is what we call um, it undergoes what we call a nucleophilic substitution. Substitution. So the nucleophilic means that we it's more interested in a nucleophile. So what is a nucleophile? A nucleophile are things that are um, things like um, NH3, like something, something. Uh, da, 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 OH, you know, so it, nucleophiles are, you know, they are electron rich. So what it means by electron rich is that the, these guys have got long pairs of electrons um, around their nitrogens or their oxygen. So that means they are really, really, really interested in the positive center. So in this case, they want something positive. So what's going to happen here? So let's just um, sorry about the writing. Let's just go through one of them. So what's gonna? What does this reaction do? And this is something you learn at university as well, um, which is called the mechanisms of organic um, reactions. So what's gonna happen is that the C, the the Cl is really really delta positive, uh, delta negative, because you compare the carbon and chlorine bond. The chlorine has electronegativity of 3.5, carbon has electronegativity of 2.1. So this Cl is really negative, this carbon is really positive. And then if you compare the carbon-oxygen double bond, same thing, this oxygen is really delta negative, this carbon is really delta positive. So you got a really delta negative um, oxygen and chlorine, which leaves your carbon to be very, very delta positive. So that creates what we call a nucleophile. So it's very, it's not exactly a very, it's, it doesn't have a fully um, positive one charge, but it's really close to that because of the very electronegative chlorine and oxygen atom that this carbon is bonded to. So if you have something like 
um, like an NH3 that comes along. Actually, I should just draw the NH3. So if you have something like an NH3 that comes along and then the nitrogen has got a lone pair of electron here, and then the lone pair of electron is really negative, right? Because it's negatively charged. So what's gonna happen is like, it's gonna be like, hey, you are very positive. Okay, so the carbon says, yes, I am very positive. And so the nitrogen comes along and then the carbon decide to kick out the chlorine. So off you go, this nitrogen is really, really cool. I wanna hang out with the nitrogen because it's got more negative electrons and you are just slightly negative and these guys are fully negative. Okay, so then, so essentially what happens is that the carbon um, kicks out, this is whatever, um, kicks out the chlorine, so this guy's gone, you know, not there anymore, and then it's bonding to the nitrogen, and then the hydrogens, and then the hydrogen, and the hydrogens, and then now, yeah, you can see there's a problem, that this nitrogen is bonding four times. So what it does is the nitrogen's kick out, it's gonna kick out one of the hydrogens, the carbon's gonna kick out the chlorine, and so you have a poor hydrogen and a poor chlorine hanging out there on their own, and they're like, hey, why don't we just bond together? And then you have produced hydrochloric acid. And this is where the name acid chloride comes into place, you know, because itself, don't get confused, because a lot of students will think, oh, acid chloride is acidic, right? Otherwise, why does it have the name? It's, it only has a name because it always produces byproduct of HCl, which is obviously hydrochloric acid, and that is acidic. Okay, so this is what it does in terms of um, reactions. So you had you can you can already see. Um, so if I'm doing the same reaction, the Cl, and then I can have like an OH group. Let's say I have propen uh, propen. Let's say we have methanol. Very simple, and this just, let's just chuck a hydrogen, just chuck a random hydrogen there. Okay, so what's gonna happen, same thing, this this oxygen has got two lone pairs of electrons, um, this is really delta positive, and then electrons go away, I'm gonna come find you, I really like you, and then this guy's like, no, off you go, and then the, the hydrogen's like, off you go, I'm gonna get kicked out as well, so, you know, you have started a chain reaction where the OH, um, Whereas this, this oxygen, this oxygen right here, this oxygen right here is gonna be attached onto this carbon and then the CH3 comes with it. And as you can see, you have made an ester. Okay, so this is how you can make an ester. And what's a byproduct? Oops, the byproduct is HCl. Okay, plus HCl. So the HCl essentially just comes from this chlorine here and this hydrogen here. Okay, so this is typically your, what we call the nucleophilic substitution, where you have, um, you, got a nu um, you got a nucleophiles in the form of a hydroxy group, like an alcohol, that attacks this carbon that has a, you know, very positive um, dipole because of the, um, because of the electronegative at, um, atoms that this carbon is bonded to. Okay, so this is how you can make an ester. So the key thing that I want to really differentiate, okay, so you can make ester in two ways, right? So we talked about, let's say I can make, I'm just gonna make it really simple, I'm gonna make a really simple ester here. So you can do this in two ways. So you can do, um, you know, just the old school COOH, your carboxylic acid and the, and the alcohol, and then you will just make COOCH3 plus H2O, right? So this is your typical, you know, with, um, you, how you can simply make an ester from a carboxylic acid and alcohol. But the key thing that you need to make sure you understand is that you need to do this in um, acidic condition and you need to reflux, you need to provide it a lot of heat in order for this reaction to take place. If I do exactly the same reaction, but then I have an acyl chloride and I react it with the same alcohol, the thing is that I don't need, um, you don't need any catalyst, you don't need any heat. Then this is where acyl chloride really stands out because this reaction is so, um, you know, it's it's they, they have such high tendency to react. This COCl is so unstable 
that this oxygen will just nat oops, will just attack this carbon and then gonna kick out the hydrogen. This is gonna kick out the chlorine, and then you will just make an ester without the need of any um, catalyst or heat. And this is where some of the some of the exam questions where they trick you. So if I gave you this ester. All right, and then they give you two empty boxes and they do it like that and they go, okay, so these two things react to become that. What must they be? And they can do more arrows going into these things, all right, for example. So the trick here is to look at this section. If they give it to you like what we're seeing right now without any heat or catalyst, that means this one of those two must be the acyl chloride because acyl chloride do not need any heat or catalyst because they are extremely extremely reactive but if they put h plus slash heat or reflux you know and that's a, that's your hint of that one of those two or the other one must be the alcohol it doesn't change but the other one must be acid uh, hydrocarboxylic acid okay because only carboxylic acid and as an alcohol requires this catalyst whereas over here they don't need anything you just literally mix them together and boom they start reacting you can see the you can actually see the hcl hcl fume being produced and um and the you know it, sometimes you can even it's very exothermic it can it, it explode sometimes if the concentration is really really high because there's so much energy being released okay so that's one of the key things um so this is how you can make ester so we talked about ester in class before so this is how you can make coo coo but then you have the two starting ingredients being slightly different one's a carboxylic acid one's the acyl chloride you make the same products but one requires no reagents uh, sorry no catalyst no heat whereas the other one does need that okay let's just do one more so that's how you make an ester and this is where i want to quickly introduce the um the other func the new function group that we're going to look at later as well um so if i have ch3 cocl what if i react this with um ammonia or sometimes amine it doesn't really matter it's just it's the nitrogen is bonding to two two h's and some other random carbons always bonding to um as you can see, three hydrogen. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, same thing. This this two valence, uh, two lone pairs, uh, one lone pair of electrons going to attack this very positive carbon. It's going to kick out the chlorine. It's going to kick out one of the hydrogen, and then what you're going to get is a nucleophilic substitution, whereas the Cl has been substituted by the nitrogen, and you have got HCl as a byproduct. Okay, so we'll talk about amide in another video. So this is how you can make an amide. You can also make an amide using carboxylic acid as well, um, because these are the same type of reaction in a way, but um, with as with carboxylic acid, it's known as condensation reactions. Um, whereas in you know if you make an amide, it's not really condensation. It's more of a um, neutralization, heat dehydration. But we'll talk about it when we get there. But with the CH three COCl, um, you always have what we call a nucleophilic substitution in this case because you have got um, this this new uh, this NH three or the OH that's really really interested to react with something what we call a nucleophile something that has a positive center okay um, so in short um, ch3cocl um, in this case or just in general acyl chloride um, they are extremely reactive so they're very reactive and you know so you can make you can turn this into ester you can turn this into uh, amide Again, we'll talk about that in a bit um, in another video. But you can you can do this really easily. You don't need any you don't need any catalyst or heat or anything like that because they are extremely reactive. And how you can distinguish acyl chloride from the rest? You know how we talk about the distinguishing tests. So if I have you know eight test tubes of solutions, how do I know which one's acyl chloride? The easiest way to distinguish acyl chloride distinguishing test distinguishing test very easily to do this you just need to add water just add water 
Just add water. Um, all you need to know, do is just add water. Nothing else that you learn at high school reacts with water the same way as acyl chloride. Because what you're gonna get, you're gonna get heat being produced. This is a very exothermic reaction. So it's, you're gonna feel the heat, you know, the, 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 and then, but what's most noticeable is the HCl white fume. Okay, so this is this is very noticeable um, HCl white fume, and how can you test that? And then you just need some moist blue limus paper to just put the limus paper near the near the white fume, and then boom, it's gonna turn red straight away because of how concentrated that HCl is. Okay, so in short, acyl chloride, you know, COCl function group, very easy to name. Just change the suffix to OYL chloride. Extremely extremely reactive. Um, and you can, we can, because it's a carboxylic acid derivative, so you have a COOH, how can I make the acyl chloride? You react that with thionyl chloride, and that will give you COCl. And this is the thing that we've been talking about for the last 10 minutes or so. Okay, so this is your acyl chloride, very reactive, and this can further react into ester without any catalyst, and this can react into amide, without any catalyst okay so you know very very powerful um, organic reagents due to its reactivity um, but yeah hopefully that um, um, this video is helpful in terms of like helping you understand how um, acid chloride works okay so i'll see you guys next time bye bye